But the greatest general is she who averts conflict altogether. Well, this general she sounds like a really wise man. I'd like, I'd like to meet this dude. We continue Advanced Wars Month with the spin-off game, Battalion Wars. When you're playing Advanced Wars, you take the role of a CEO, overlooking the battlefield, making turn-based tactical decisions. In Battalion Wars, you are the poor sap on the front lines. Get in the trenches, shoot the man, be the meat shield for the artillery unit. Let's check it out. Battalion Wars. Now, you can really tell that this is a spin-off of the Advanced Wars series. And you can tell that because it is written on the Wikipedia article. Nowhere on the box does it put forth this assertion, and you certainly wouldn't know it from anything in-game. Not a single character is from a previous game. However, Brigadier Betty does look a bit like Nell. But even the world's superpowers aren't the same. Seriously, just call the yellow guys yellow comment and I believe you. There is only one place where I might be willing to admit that maybe this game is aware of its source material, and that is the result screen. That is the Advanced Wars font, and you are usually graded on speed, technique, and power. But I'm pretty sure this game is its own thing. Not to say that it isn't fun, but as such a huge Advanced Wars fan, I would have liked an Easter egg or two, you know? Okay, so. Two nations have their militaries aimed at one another's throats, just itching for a reason to die in a conflict over soil and resources. This is where you start. You get control of a rifleman and get to learn this game's controls. You control a man from the third person perspective. You have a jump, you have a roll, you can switch to any unit in your army, and you need to control all the available men. And this is where I want to say that Battalion War seems like the polar opposite of Bloodborne. That game is not easy. But it is simple. Battalion Wars is easy, but it is far from simple. So you can control all of your units and just rush into the fray. But this quickly starts working after just a couple missions. In this game, you need to be keenly aware of who you're ordering and at what you're ordering them to attack. I mean, if you give the correct orders, you will clean house in this game. But if you give the wrong order twice, maybe even once, you will need to restart the whole mission. So in this game, there are lots of different unit types. Each unit has a target that they can positively pulverize. And they also have a unit that can shred them in second. What you gotta do is you lock onto an enemy. You select your units that are gonna fight it, and then you send them in. Heck, maybe even you lead the charge, because after all, the player controlled unit is an absolute god among men. So, back to mission number one. While learning the controls for this game, we discover that the Tundra forces are spying on us. We shoot down a couple of their spy balloons and destroy their listening devices, and I wonder who the aggressors of this war are. Tundra invaded us, but the first shots and kills belong to the Western Frontier. Anyway, next mission starts, and we get to drive a recon unit. And the control of the recon is kind of... Uh... <laughs> I, I just want to go on record and say that during that entire clip, I didn't move the control stick. That's just how, that's just, that's just forward for the thing. After the driving section, you get a platoon. And this is where my greatest nightmare of advanced wars happened. I always think that it's really cool of my units to listen to my commands, no matter how suicidal for them it may be. But what if they went rogue? Mission number two, Battalion Wars is what would happen. You see, they said the bazooka units were coming for me. So I took all of my units and I charged where I thought they would be coming from. I went halfway through the entire recon section, killing everything that faced me. And then I realized I am way off the mark. They gave me a big group of soldiers to take down a challenge and I, I frittered it down to one half health rifleman. Bring it on. You're no match for my dodge roll! <laughs> okay, I took a bazooka around right to my chest, but hey, I won! What do you mean 29 technique and zero speed? Mission 5 is a major letdown. It's kind of a reverse D-Day. You have to defend a beach from waves of charging enemies, and I tried multiple times putting men in machine gun bunkers, placing artillery units on the two elevated parts of the level. This failed every time! They would just run past my setup and capture the point with no challenge whatsoever. So, I just placed all my units on the flag with zero tactics, and it worked about a hundred times better! However, the next level did require tactics. As stated earlier, send the right units in, easy win. 
make the wrong choice even once and the level becomes impossible. I need to destroy the Iron Eight. Eight heavy tanks. If I see bazooka troops, I send in my riflemen. If I see riflemen, I send in my tanks. If I see tanks, I send in my bazooka men. I can also send in my missile guys, but I need to be careful because if I lose those guys, I am defenseless against airstrikes. You think a rifleman's gonna stop it? Nah, he just looks big. We'll show him. Yeah. With this, I need to make each choice quickly. However, it feels a lot better winning these skirmishes tactically rather than just charging the enemy with all units selected! Come on, man! Nobody lives forever! After a couple of missions, Tundra is completely against the ropes, so the leader of Tundra asks for help from Exylvania. Just the most unapologetically evil looking characters I've ever seen. Hey, old Vlad! Wait, 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 wait. I, I get that we're evil, Ubel, but, but Heiling? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe tone it back a bit. I'm not Hitler, after all. Granted, Exylvania doesn't actually help Tundra, but instead attacks both sides, getting the Tundra and the Western Frontier to enter into an alliance. I do like this game, and every mission has fun little objectives to do, but some are really hard. Like, protect troops that you have no control over. <laughs> Lady, I can scarcely keep my own troops alive, and now you're asking me to protect troops that I can't control or even see? They also had a stupid mission where I was expected to keep riflemen alive who were charging into tanks. And what do I keep them alive with? A bomber! The bomber made me wish I was in a recon unit! Yeah, the recon was unwieldy because it was a ridiculous turn radius, but I'll take an overactive turn radius over no turn radius at all! Only one man left, Commander. Let's hope he's one heck of a soldier. And he must have been one... Hikyuvi, Hukivo, Hukava, Hukuve, soldier, because we won that mission. But yes, I hate missions where I have to protect units that I have no control over. Let's see, what happens next? I, I bomb some oil rigs, and, and, and then Ubel, he, he kills the leader of the Tundra army while quoting Arnold Schwarzenegger. What have you done with the Tsar? I let him go. One thing that was pretty common in this game is saving POWs. You know, with a game like this, there's only two ways to give the players units halfway through a map. Either with a reinforcement drop or by saving POWs. One thing I find really funny is anytime there's a POW that actually pilots a vehicle. Because they're locked in the camp with the vehicles, with the mounted machine gun. Heck, usually there isn't even a guard around them. Mostly they're just being kept there on the honor system. Okay, we're gonna lock you in there with your fighter jet, but you have to promise not to use it unless you get set free. No, that's, per that's perfectly fair. One mission that I had was purely saving POWs, and it had one final objective that was Kill all the gunships. And, and you see, I had anti-air fighter jets in the sky, but the thing is, I need to lock onto the gunships and press Y. But I wasn't exactly in a position where I could stop and look up to the skies. Ah! Where are my planes? Please! Please! So we start beating back Exylvania, and we ally with the Solar Kingdom, which I... Uh, come, come, come to think of it was... Completely unnecessary. They show Exylvania getting desperate. At one point, they say that they have access to an undead army, but the Kaiser isn't really willing to use it, which leads us to the last three missions, which are actually the easiest ones in the game. No race starts, maybe 10 minutes apiece? First mission, you have a fully armed battle station and a bunch of infantry. After the battle station died, I, I had my remaining men just hug the wall so we could sneak to the end of the level. And at this point, we had to destroy statues of Vlad. But while this was happening, we were attacked by helicopters, which wouldn't be too bad. You know, just look in the sky, lock on the enemy, press Y. But the statue was so big that I kept locking onto it and not the helicopters. The good news was that once the statues were destroyed, that was the final objective. But I thought it was a hilarious ending, but not as hilarious as an ending of the next level. So Ingrid stole the Kaiser sword and summoned the Undead Legion. So we need to take a force, make our way to the Citadel, blow up the Obelisks, and then blow up the Citadel. And you know, something like the Undead Legion sounds like some final level crap, you know? But nothing felt final. Not the cutscene afterwards, not the feeling during the battle, and certainly not how I beat it. Okay, so 
every unit is dead. I, I, I have a rifleman with, w w what is that, three health? And two heavy tanks locked onto me. Well, flip only one thing to do. Dodge roll like an idiot, letting five bullets fly at a time. Woo! <laughs> I won! Pure steel. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, Undead Legion, the ultimate evil. Only the ruler of the Solar Empire can defeat it, as she did in ancient times. You want to see this epic duel? That, well, that, that, that was it. That's whatever. One final level. Basically, we're storming the Kaiser's castle, so he has to answer for his war crimes. And I did this one without flamethrower units. They, they said that if you lose all of your infantry, you'd be unable to win, so I had all my flamethrowers just stay back at the beginning of the level, and we still won quite handily. Making me believe that after several eight hours, I may have gotten a hand on the mechanics of Battalion Wars! This has been He-Man Gaming Station's Advanced Wars Month. We've looked at great titles, we've looked at Japanese exclusive titles, we've even looked at the spin-off titles. All that's left now is for next week, where I'll be doing my first top 10 in nearly three years. However, this is going to be the first top 10 where I actually feel like I know what I'm talking about. All you gotta do is subscribe for that and more stupid reviews. See you later.